بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد وكتنوي عند منظومة بأقيرة السفرينية بإمام محمد بن أحمد السفريني رحمه الله تعالى and we've been reading from the explanation of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala and we have reached the, we have been reading from the bait where the Nadim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned as we will conclude tonight before we move on and that is the statement kalamuhu subhanahu qadimu and that is what we, we have already mentioned much of the explanation of this bait here or this line. And that is the line where the author he mentions and that the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu or the Quran which is the kalam of Allah is qadim. And we mentioned what Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned about this statement here of giving the Quran the description of being qadim that this is something that is not correct. This is something that is not correct to attribute to the Qur'an. This is laysa bi sahih. This is not correct. Correct. Because the Qur'an laysa bi qadim. Al-inna Allah azza wa jal takallam bihi hina in zalihi. Allah Ta'ala, he spoke with the Qur'an and it was his speech, the speech of the Qur'an during the time of his revelation. And it was not something that was Qadim or something that was old that had already been there. And Ibn Taymin he mentions or he uses as a, as an example how Allah Ta'ala in the Quran refers and uses the past tense verb when speaking about certain incidents that took place. That Allah Ta'ala has heard the statement of the woman who is discussing the issue with you, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu concerning the way that her husband divorced her in a manner from amongst the ways of Al-Jahiliyyah, which is by way of the Hal. So Allah Ta'ala referred here, Semiya, which is the past tense verb. Semiya, which is the past tense verb. And then he said, A'iyya al-wara bin nasiya alimu. A'iyya al-wara. The Nadim, he says here, A'ya al-wara. And what he means by A'ya, he means bima'ana a'jaza. A'jaza. That they are incapable. Who? Al-wara. And the statement of the Nadim, wal-wara, this term here is al-khalq. فَلَمْ يَأْتِيَ الْخَلْقُ بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ That the creation is incapable of bringing forth or producing anything that is like this Qur'an. قال الله تعالى, Allah Ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 88, And if the human being and the jinn, the humankind and the jinn kind, if they were to unite, and they were to come together and cooperate in order to bring about the likes of this Qur'an, to bring about something that is like this Qur'an, لَا يَعْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ They would not be able to bring about something, to produce something that is like this Qur'an. Even if they were all to be one to another, even if they were all, each of them, to help and support and aid one another in this, it is not possible. Allah Ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 23, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّوْنَ عَلَىٰ أَبَدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ And if you are in any doubt about what has been sent down, this tanzil upon our servant, our messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ and then Allah Ta'ala, He gives them something that is easier than producing an entire product that is like this Qur'an. He said, rather produce 
just a surah. Just bring one surah. Allah Ta'ala, he also says in Surah Al-Hud, Ayah 13, أَمْ يَقُولُونَ افْتَرَى قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِأَشْرِ سُوَرٍ مِثْلِهِ And Allah Ta'ala, he says, or do they say that he has forged this Qur'an? Allah Ta'ala, he says, say to them, bring forth ten verse, two, excuse me, ten chapters that are like this. Bring forth ten suwar, ten surahs that is like this Qur'an. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, فَأَجِزَ فَأَجِ الْعَرَبُ وَهُمْ أَهْلُ الْبَلَاغَ أَنْ يَعْتُوا بِمِثْلِ الْقُرْآنِ إِذَنْ يَقُونُ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ لِأَنَّهُ لَوْ كَانَ كَلَامُ الْمَخْلُوقِ لَأَمْكَنَ لِلْمَخْلُوقِ أَنْ يَأْتِي أَنْ يَأْتِيَ بِمِثْلِهِ فَلَمَّا عَجِزَ الْمَخْلُوقُونَ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِهِ أَلِمَ أَنَّهُ صِفَاتٌ مِنْ صِفَاتِ اللَّهِ أَلَّتِي لَا تُمَاثِلُهَا صِفَاتُ الْمَخْلُوقِينَ The beautiful statement from the Sheikh here. He says the Arabs, although they were Ahlul Balagha, they were the people of language. They were the people of eloquence with regards to the language that they spoke. And they knew how to bring things that were beautiful, bring lines and bring يعني, things that were composed of their language that was very unique and very beautiful and very far, يعني, far-reaching in its meaning with regards to the way that they could utilize the language. He said, but they were incapable of bringing the likes and producing anything similar to this Qur'an. Therefore, يَقُونُ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ Therefore, there is no doubt that this Qur'an must be. And it is the Qalam of Allah Ta'ala, the speech of Allah. Because if it was the speech of the creation, then others from most of the creation would have been able to produce something that was similar to it. But when they were incapable of producing something that was similar to it, and they were not able to produce something that was similar to it, similar to it then it became known that عُلِمَ أَنَّهُ صِفَةٌ مِنْ صِفَاتِ اللَّهِ That it became known that this kalam of Allah Ta'ala, this Qur'an is the kalam of Allah, and it is a description from amongst the descriptions of Allah, yani His kalam, in which there is nothing from amongst the descriptions of the creation, meaning the kalam of the creation. And this is a very important point here, very important point that goes back to the statement of Allah, to, of Allah Ta'ala, which we utilize as a qaida, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ That if the Qur'an is the kalam of Allah, and it is not the kalam of the creation, that we know that, and it is the sifat of Allah, sifa bin sifat Allah, and that there is nothing from amongst the sifat of Allah Ta'ala that resembles the sifat of the creation. Nothing from the sifat of Allah that resembles the sifat of the creation. And if the kalam of the creation was like the kalam of Allah, then they would have been able to bring forth something that was similar to, that, similar to the Qur'an. If the kalam of Allah or the kalam of the creation was like the kalam of Allah, then they would have been able to bring forth something that was similar to this Qur'an. And this is an argument and a proof against those people who deny the Qur'an being the kalam of Allah. Or they try to make ta'wil of the sifat of Allah azawajal. Or they try to deny the, the kalam of Allah as a wajal. It is very clear that Allah Ta'ala, He says that this is His kalam. That the Quran is the kalam of Allah. Then give them refuge. And give them, they give them protection. So that they can hear the kalam of Allah. Meaning the Quran. Ibn Taymiyyah, Allah Ta'ala, He goes on, He mentions that the author, He mentions bin Nasi. النص هو ما ذكرنا من الآيات السابقة and of course that the النص it is that clear those clear verses clear ayat that have been previously mentioned concerning the Quran being the kalam of Allah وقوله يا عليم أي يا ذا العلم كأنه يقول إعلم أنه أعي الورى بالنص so it is though the the Nadim he's saying so no K N O W Anyone who understands and has comprehension and possesses understanding that the creation is incapable and they are not able to produce anything like this Qur'an.
And then the Nadam, he goes on, and we'll stop right here tonight for brevity before we move on into the next bait in order to explain the rest of the uh, the bait of the Nadam. Moving on to, into the 42nd bait, we'll stop here tonight with this little portion. And it's very important that any time we are reminded about the Qur'an and the Kalam of Allah, and we're reminded about the fact that there's nothing like this Qur'an, nothing like the speech of Allah Ta'ala, and there's no one that can produce anything like the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and this should be something that increases us in our iman, increases us in our respect, increases us for increases us in our desire to learn the book of Allah Azawajal, to learn the speech of Allah, that which no one from amongst the creation can produce any speech like this. Ma'al Asif, unfortunately, we find satisfaction and we find any entertainment or we find any comfort and we are and we we chase after and we love the speech of everyone else from amongst the creation other than Allah. And the speech of Allah Ta'ala is neglected. Maybe a person recites it, maybe a person reads it, maybe a person listens to it, but has been have been reciting it and reading it and listening to it for some time now and don't know its meanings. Do not understand what Allah Ta'ala is saying. Do not understand the kalam of Allah. Do not understand the speech of Allah. Do not understand the verses of the Quran. Do not know the meanings of the words that are being recited. Do not know the meanings and the explanation of the verses and the ahkam and the belief that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has placed in this book. This is a very unfortunate, sad thing. Very unfortunate and a sad thing. That if we were sitting in a group of people and they were speaking another language and we were sitting amongst them day in and day out and we did not understand them, this would cause us grief. This would cause us difficulty. This would place some type of restriction in our chest and we would feel like we're being suffocated to be able to sit or to sit amongst people in which they are communicating and we're unable to communicate with them. And we're unable to know what it is that they are saying. For most, for the most part, that a person would go out and he would strive his utmost. She would strive her utmost to try to learn the language of those people in which they are around every day and need to communicate with. In which they want to know whether they are saying. What is it so funny that this person is saying that they are laughing at? What is it that they are talking about this person is saying that the people are so interested in? You find people even want to learn the Arabic language when they cannot understand what the ulama are saying. Or they can't understand what a person who speaks Arabic is saying. So this gives them a raqbah, this gives them a desire, this gives them I need mean, something that wants, them to, wants to make them learn the Arabic language. But we pray and we stand in front of Allah day and night and we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. The Quran is recited to us day and night. Some of us listen to the Qur'an day and night and we don't feel suffocated. And we don't feel like there's something wrong. And we don't feel like that there's a restriction in our chest. And we don't feel inadequate that we don't know what Allah wa ta'ala is saying to us when we hear the speech of Allah. This is a musibah. This is a musibah. Uh, you'll find that the people, they want to know كيف حالك حياك الله مَا هَذَا ذَهَبَ هَذَا هَذَا بَيْتْ هَذَا قَلَمْ هَذَا كَذَا وَكَذَا But they don't want to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to them. And no doubt about it, in order to know what Allah ta'ala is saying to you, yes, you must take the steps of knowing هَذَا الْبَيْتْ وَهَذَا الْمَسْجِدْ وَهَذَا الْقَلَمْ هَذَا هَذِهِ بِنْتْ هَذَا الرَّجُلْ And all of these things. Let's check. But you'll find that these things are being learnt not for the sake of trying to understand what their Lord Azzawajal is being is saying. So anytime we have the chance to, from a standpoint of our aqidah, to understand the importance of this Quran, to understand the significance of this Quran, to understand the that the status and the nature of this Quran that is the kalam of Allah, we should take the time to remind ourselves about that. And we should take the time to understand that we need to know what Allah wa is saying to us 
in his book, in his speech. And we need to feel some type of way, some type of anxiety, some type of restriction in our chest, some type of suffocation until we learn what it is that our Lord 